Now, throughout your study of uh, mathematics, there are going to be several basic functions that we just need to know the graphs of. And so today is just a discussion on the first six of them. All right, so let's look at the first one f of x equals x. This is actually called the identity function because every x value is paired up with itself. For example, uh, when x is 1, your y value is 1. When x is negative 8, your y value is negative 8. Uh, that's how you get your ordered pairs for this particular, for this particular uh, graph. So, like when x is 1, your y value is 1, you get a point. When x is 2, your y value is 2, so forth and so on. All right? And that's why you get this line. And it's called the identity function, because every x value is paired up with itself. Okay, makes sense? All right, so the second one is called the squaring function. And it takes every real number and pairs it up with its square. For example, if you take the number 3 and plug it in for x here, uh, you're going to get 9 back for y. So it takes uh, every real number and pairs it up with its square. That's how you get all the ordered pairs. So when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is negative 1, y is also 1. When x is 2, we're up here at 4. When x is negative 2, we're up here at 4. Uh, so forth and so on. And so when you connect those dots, it looks like the following. And I'm, you've probably all seen this shape before. It's called a parabola. Well, there's the graph. So that's the basic, your basic parabola. We can get all of our other parabolas by just doing things to this one, so to speak. And we'll see that in a later video. All right, it's called the squaring function. So here's the identity function. Here's the squaring function. Next would be f of x equals x cubed. It's called the cubing function. It takes every real number and pairs it up with its cube. So when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is negative 1, well, what's negative 1 cubed? Well, it's also negative 1. Now, you might be thinking this might be a line, but let's keep going. When x is 2, what's 2 cubed? Well, that's 8. It's like way up here somewhere. And when x is negative 2, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. It's like way down here. So it's no longer a line. In fact, it's this, it's this uh, snake-like looking thing. It kind of goes up like such and comes down. And that's the cubic function, the cubing function. Right? Now, for all three of these, the domain is all real numbers. Everybody see that? Domain, all real numbers. All x values being used. All x values are being used. All x values are being used. For the range on the identity function, the range is also all real numbers, because it goes forever up and forever down. And for x cubed, f of x equals x cubed, the range is also all real numbers, because it goes forever up and forever down. But for the squaring function, the range is from 0 to infinity. Those are the only y values being used. Okay? All right, let's keep going. Next on the list, the square root function takes every real number and pairs it up with a square root. But we've got to get real numbers back. So for example, if x was negative 4, the square root of negative 4 is not a real number. Therefore, it does not lie on our xy coordinate system here, our uh, rectangular coordinate system here. So when x is 0, what's the square root of 0? Well, that's 0. But we can't take any numbers to the left of 0 because they become non-real. So in this case, we, we're only able to take numbers out here uh, to the right. So when x is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. When x is two, when x is four, two, three, four. When x is four, what's the square root of four? Well, it's two. And you get this when you connect the dots. It's like a half a parabola on its side, so to speak. Okay, but that's the graph of the square root function. Its domain would be from zero to infinity, and its range would be from zero to infinity as well. All right, everybody, so far so good. All right, two more. Next would be the cube root. All right, this takes every real number and pairs it up with its cube root. So when the cube root of 0 is 0. The cube root of 1 is 1. But what about negative numbers? Can we take cube roots of negative numbers? Now remember, the cube root of something means find a number that we can cube to give us the number underneath the radical sign there. Well. 
when x is negative 1, the cube root of negative 1 is also negative 1, because negative 1 raised to the third power is still negative 1. And then if you take 8, we got here at 8, what's the cube root of 8? It's 2. And the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. And so you get this snake-like looking thing that's on its side, so to speak. And that's the cube root function. Domain's all real numbers, and in this case the range is also all real numbers. It goes forever up and forever down, it's just going to take a long time to do that. Alright, one more. The absolute value function. Alright, so plotting a couple points. When x is 0, absolute value of 0 is 0. When x is 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1. When x is negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is also 1. Right? 2, well, absolute value of 2 is 2. Negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is also 2. So it's similar to the parabola thing, but it's not curved. So the parabola is curved down here near the origin. Here, it's actually a straight line. This comes down, come to a point at the origin, and then this part goes off. So the absolute value function has a sharp point right there, whereas the square, uh, the squaring function has this nice smooth curve uh, near the origin there. The domain for the absolute value function is all real numbers, and the range is from 0 to infinity. Alright, so it's a good idea to have these six graphs kind of ingrained in your brain a little bit. Uh, whenever we see uh, f of x equals x squared, we need to be picturing, oh, it's like a basic parabola thing. Whenever we have the square root of x, it's you know, our basic um, square root graph function. And then all the other graphs we're going to play with for a while are going to be taking these functions and just doing things to them, like moving them right, left, up, down, flipping them around, stretching them and shrinking them, stuff like that. So if we know the graphs of these things, it's going to help with the graphs of the more complicated looking functions later. All right. That's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.